All right, individually, God's servant, Apostle Arame Osai of Velsi, a deep secret to the body of Christ. I would like you to listen to it as you pick the point. May God Almighty bless you. Amen. Righteousness, the first righteousness A was given to us as a gift. This righteousness A that we're talking about because there is righteousness B. So this righteousness A that we're talking about, given to us as a gift, is the basis of our right standing before God. And then it's not something that we acquired through any means. It's just like when an ex-convict comes out of prison. And then the state now said, well... Let's join him to Pastor Joshua's church. We believe that if he goes there for three years, he'll be rehabilitated. We will no longer need to put him on the watch list. If they incorporate him into this church as a member, as that ex-convict walks through this door and comes into the congregation, in his heart, he, will be, he, will, he believes that we'll see him as a convict. And we are not going to integrate him fully into the community because we see him as a threat. So he'll be sitting on the edge He'll be reading body language. Yes. He will try to understand the deeper reason for which pastor preached the message he preached. Yes. And if he brings a, a certain scripture, he will interpret it. Because he believes we will see him in the light of his past. But after six months, seven months, nobody cares. Then he realizes, hey, these guys don't care. Then he cast away that consciousness. Then he gets integrated. And when he gets integrated, pastor now says, okay, you will be my personal assistant. But you are not looking good. Takes him to the boutique. Puts him. He said, this is your haircut. We are going to change it. And maybe he came out of the prison with dreadlocks, nutty dread. So, uh oh, we will need to do something about this arrangement. <laughs> and after nine months, he no longer sees himself as a convict. That's what God did to us. He knew that we... Uh. <laughs> he knew that we were all ex-convicts. So when we came into his kingdom, he knew we needed a gift. So he gave us a gift of righteousness. And that gift of righteousness gives us the opportunity to be able to stand before God without condemnation. It gives us the opportunity to be able to stand before God without inferiority. And that platform of righteousness provides the premise upon which we can begin to do the prayer business. Just like the generation of Seth began to do. This is the philosophy of the New Testament. In the New Testament, God is giving you access to himself. Do you understand that? Yes. Access. What you do with the access that God gives you will determine what you become. I have, yes, that's the, that's the idea of the New Testament. You know, the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Change that word liberty, put it, change it to access. The original Greek word used there actually means access. So, when the, where, are you there with me? Yes. Wherever the Holy Ghost, if the Holy Ghost has come to tabernacle your heart, the reason for which is there is that he's giving you access to God. What you do with the access, if you, if you decide to explore the access, you will receive grace. You will receive empowerment. Yes. Sufficient empowerment to live life and to project godliness. You will live above sin. You will live above Satan. You will live above the world. You live above the age. You live above the, uh, the darkness just because you took advantage of access to explore the potential of the grace of God that is seated on your spirit man so first of all initially you were given righteousness A as a gift so that you can produce righteousness B which is supposed to be a lifestyle you get that? so there's an aspect of you that is a gift designed to be an equipment spiritual capital that will produce righteousness as a lifestyle. By the time I take you to the book of 1st John, you begin to see that John is speaking about the righteousness that is revealed as a lifestyle. Are you there? Yes, Whereas salvation is by grace. When you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, Jesus is not called the God of grace, he's called the Lord of righteousness. And what he's measuring is not what is righteousness that is revealed through works. It's righteousness be that will be the parameter for measurement before the judgment seat of Christ. So when you see a believer or a preacher, mostly a preacher, a preacher that gets you comfortable with righteousness A, and it doesn't reveal to you that that's an investment that God wants to receive a harvest of righteous deeds from your line. 
That person has preached half truth, just like Satan always preaches half truth. Deception is not just saying lies, it's also half truth. And Satan has equipped so many preachers of the gospel with half truth. And it is because of the half truth. You know, most of us coming from Africa, Oklahoma is a state that produced a lot of ministry products that we fed on on the continent of, of Africa. So when I heard, oh, Oklahoma, I, I wanted to even come myself. Be gone. <laughs> Because I wanted to see what was on ground in Oklahoma. Because a lot of products came from this place and oh my God, they were like gold. Before you listen to some of them, you take a fast. You don't know when you'll get the next tape. So this one, this one. So you get tapes from Kenneth Hagen. And then the emphasis of exercising your spirit, speaking in tongues. So when we receive it, then we copy it. We copy it. We walk in it. We walk in it. Until we begin to have our own personal life encounters and we become authorities in our own right in that reality then you visit Oklahoma many years later then uh, that forceful compelling power of righteous deeds you don't get to see it so very often it is because we have been downgraded it is the it is the ecosystem that Cain pioneered that is designed to deplete your conviction, deplete your fervor, deplete your fire, deplete your passion until you become plastic. And what I mean by plastic is that you lose your affection for Jesus. Your, the, what, will, what will motivate you to continue with Jesus is love. And the moment you lose that first love, you will no longer be motivated. You'll be plastic. Most of what you'll be doing is by compulsion. You want to please the pastor, that's why you're present. You don't know you're already... Yay! No, you see, you see, you see, I'm not the cause of this challenge. The, it's pastor that called me. I'm not... I'm, I'm not... I'm not responsible. The moment love, you have a shortfall of love, he will threaten to remove your candlestick. Yeah. So a lot of people have lost their place in the spirit. But they are still coming to church. But their calling is no longer in view. And Jesus knows that he is not about to profit from this life. The other day, my friend's son was admitted in the hospital. I don't know what happened. He needed oxygen. That was when we knew the price, the cost for, of oxygen for one hour. And, and I calculated how much Jesus spends to keep me going with oxygen for 24 hours. So if Jesus knows that he can no longer profit from your life, there is no need for him to sustain that oxygen. No need. No need. So righteousness is handed out as a gift to create access. Then as you do business with God, God has an inherent, uncompromising nature called holiness. As you're doing business with him, you become a partaker of that nature. Are you there? So when we see your lifestyle, we will see not just righteousness as a gift. We will see righteousness in practicality, revealed through works. And when Jesus sits in the judgment seat of Christ, he will be judging he sits as a righteous judge, not a judge of grace. So he's judging and looking out for righteousness that was revealed through works. Whereas salvation is what? By grace, through faith, is not of works, lest no man should boast. But what Jesus is scanning to see at his judgment seat is not grace through faith. What he's scanning to see is righteousness revealed through works. So that righteousness you got as a gift is supposed to eventually become a lifestyle. Revealed in your works. That's why you... Yeah. Did you get that? In view of the above, therefore, it is needful for me to bring to your notice that righteousness is slow. The guys that kicked up... Oh, okay, let me explain. Those days when I worked in the oil industry, if I wanted to take bribe, I would have been a big, a, in fact, I would have been richer than some governors. 
because of my rank on the field. I had five opportunities for deals in one month. Five opportunities. Every month I had five opportunities because I was a senior guy in, in that place. I was a supervisor. That in that side, I'm the guy. So when I show up, people tremble. The stamp I had came from the federal government. For you to, to be in custody of that stamp, you are a powerful man. So and the reason why you are a powerful man is that that stamp can generate deals. Five deals in one month. Are, are you with me? And it's interesting to know that I was without a, a, a car. No automobile. Oh my God. So, so there, there were, oh my, okay, I know you understand. No need for me to travel on that lane. Because as much as I'm telling you my story, I'm not trying to make you see me. That's, the, uh, that's my fear. That's not my objective. Hmm? I'm just trying to enrich your understanding. So I, ha I, was, I had that opportunity for seven years. Five deals per month. I had that window for seven years. At least, at least, I would have been richer than three governors in Nigeria. Yes. At least. Governors of some kind of states. At least three states. Eh? Are, I don't want to mention their name here because we're online. They say, you mentioned our state. No. I, I would have been richer. I would have afforded vehicles that those governors cannot afford. And if they try to afford it, they'll, they'll be arrested. Okay, you understand what we're talking about. <laughs> but you know what? When righteousness becomes a lifestyle that is revealed through works, your soul will be faced with the opportunities to gratify self, which is the philosophy of this city. Self employment, self entertainment, self defense. Are you following? Yes, sir. So you always have a choice to make, and the choice will be on these platforms. Will you serve self or will you walk in righteousness? Anytime you walk in righteousness, you deny self the opportunity to glory. That kind of living is what the Bible calls bearing the cross. Because if you deny self that glory, you will feel pain. That pain is the pain of death, unto which we have been sentenced in Christ Jesus. For Paul says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, making us conformable unto the kind of death he died. So in Christ Jesus, there's an experience of death. Death to self is an experience that you will remember every day. Because you will make choices every day that will deny self if you want to walk in righteousness. Let me tell you the truth. Oh my God. Are you still here? Good. So the opposite of walking in righteousness is walking in the broad way, which is that people that are multiplying. I was away from home because of my duty. My duty was so sensitive. And people that had the portfolio that I had, they were the ones holding the petroleum sector in my country. If there is a gap in your work, it's a national project. You see, it's the minister of petroleum that we call you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Okay, that's what I'm talking about. It was, we were, so we did not have, we worked Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, for 16 years. Even when you claim, they claim you're on leave, you're still working. But on, on the computer, it, it will read leave. But your reports are still entering in. And the people receiving your reports are not asking, are you not supposed to be on leave? Nobody cares about that. If the report doesn't come, I am old. Some of you understand what I'm talking about. I was on that tightrope. I was away from home for 11 years. 11 years. And the reason why I couldn't travel with my wife was because two reasons. First reason, I was a righteous man. If you are righteous and you do righteous stuff in the petroleum industry in Nigeria, people, strong people will lose money. I did not want my wife to die because of my, my conviction. They can kill you, kill your father, kill your mother, kill your brothers, kill your sisters, burn your house in the village. You can't fight that mafia if God is not backing you up. So I wanted my wife to live longer than myself. My going there is a calling. I'm standing there for Jesus. If I die in the process, it was part of the calling. But my wife doesn't need to die. That's the first reason why I did not come to that place with my wife. My wife never visited my office. Nobody knew how her face looked like. Even in ministry. It took 10 days before her face appeared on the poster. Because I was a lion from the wilderness, crying for righteousness. And I didn't want her to be a victim of my calling. <laughs> Pastor, it is not too long ago before I discovered that I will live longer. It's not too long ago. I'm telling you the truth. I thought I would be cut off and I was prepared for it. <laughs> okay, 
were in America. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Your commitment to righteousness is going to domicile you on a narrow path. Uh, some people will call you a Jew. You are not in sync. Because righteousness will not produce as fast results as the Broadway will produce. Are you there? But the guy that is taking bribe in the office, you will notice he has extra cash. And the extra cash I'm talking about is not in Nigerian Naira. It's in your currency. And I always say, when there is a bag full of new dollars, and it's open, and you smell the dollars, only few men will still walk in righteousness after they inhale that smell. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> Listen to me. I left that place after those seven years without, still without a car. I had colleagues that were playing ball. They would walk into the car shops in Lagos and buy two cars in one day. So the guy that is on the broad road, he, he will multiply faster. But you, that you are keeping to the code of righteousness, your growth will not be that fast. The reason is because, are you there? This hybrid growth that the people have in Genesis chapter 6 verse 1 will spring and it will fade and die. But the, the growth that comes through righteousness can be transgenerational. Yeah. And it came to pass. So you are not very wise if you are looking at unrighteous people and comparing yourself to them and maybe you are preaching in church like this and then using unrighteous people as examples of what success is. You are, you are suffering from spiritual myopia. You have a defect. And you need eye salve for your eyes so that you can see. In order for you to live righteously, you must know how to survive with little. <laughs> if you cannot abase, you are sold out. You are falling. So your appetites are not in control of your life. Yes, you pass through Walmart and you are seeing the things but you have the courage to walk away it means that your soul is not anchored on there's no anchor on your soul with which the devil can manipulate your life so that even though you are navigating through this world we have seen that you are not off this world what you are preoccupied about is in the reality that you contact through the presence of the Holy Spirit that is upon your heart. The things you hear from the throne of God, the instructions you receive, becomes what preoccupies you and keeps you fastened to the path of righteousness. So you see, as we begin to study from chapter 6, you are going to begin to see that the divergence becomes wider and wider between the two races. And the book of Genesis is more of a map than a message. Because you can situate yourself within, within the great divide on which of the sides that you are working on. If you study that book. I know you will not say amen. <laughs> amen. Ah! Hallelujah. Yeah. So they began to multiply. And I can imagine that they were mocking the other guys, the righteous guys. You guys say you are with God. You have not grown. Your civilization is almost like extinct. It doesn't look like you are in the advantage. But we are increasing. We are multiplying. Our, our progression is geometric. I laugh at people. When ministers of the gospel boast with the number of people they sit. I have been to heaven a few times. I've seen the vistas, the parameters. Oh, we celebrate the wrong people. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Mm, what? Let me stop there. We celebrate the wrong people for the wrong reasons. Because when you begin to navigate this path, you might have so much rank in the sight of God and in the natural area, they can call you small. You know, I told you righteousness doesn't produce results fast. Have you heard of that scripture that says a, a, a good man leaveth an inheritance for his children's children? That scripture doesn't mean that because I want to be a good man, let me build a house so that my children can inherit. You see, if, you, if you're a good man, are you walking in righteousness? You're walking in righteousness, abstaining from contracts with the devil will create a consequence in the generations to come. We're sitting in the midst of bribery opportunities. I mean huge, I can't say it online, huge 
on a weekly basis. The moment you put that stamp, people pay for it. And they will not wire it through your account so that it cannot be traced. They will bring it in bulk, in cash. You need to have an SUV that has a big boot. Let me stop there. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> All right, thank you. And I hope that uh, this clip really blesses and transforms your life. If you do, don't forget to hit that subscription button and turn on your notification so that you will not miss any of our daily upload. Once again, don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe. Until then, may God Almighty bless and keep you. Amen.